What's up, guys? It has been with 2020 election predictions, and today I want to look at the Senate um, right now. So one thing that I think will be pretty, pretty interesting is that we are not going to know who is in, in, in control of the Senate until January, I think. So right now, I, I feel pretty confident um, in these calls. Um, if we look at the uh, New York Times, they've called all these races except for the races in North Carolina and Alaska, which it, it, it seems like that they're, they're very, very slow on, on counting their votes. But um, Maine and s some of these other states that people thought might be close uh, have already been called, like Iowa and Montana. So he, he, here are the margins where they were. Just to um, c compare it to kind of where I was, um, I got most of the states right. The only state that I got wrong was Maine. Um, and uh, I, I just had that as a tilt towards us, Sarah Gideon. So, I mean, I, I was I was pretty close on that. But the margins, I, I, I wasn't exactly right on. So, I mean, Susan Collins won by a likely margin, which I just completely blew, blew my mind. Um, and, like, Lindsey Graham won by a lot more, and same with Joni Ernst. Um, so, um, they, they definitely defied uh, expectations there. So, if we look at this map, there weren't any like lean Republican states. There was only kind of one tilt Republican states, but Republicans on the Senate level did a lot better than people thought. Like John Cornyn in Texas, Steve Daines in Montana, Joni Ernst, Susan Collins. And I mean, w w one reason I think why the polls were so wrong here, and w w one lesson that I learned here is that Susan Collins has been a con or has been a senator in Maine for over twenty years. And every time she has run in the Senate, she's won by double digits. So people know her. People know her in the Senate. She's she's a moderate. She's she has not been kind of like corrupted. Like I, I think people might have thought like like Lindsey Graham had, had kind of like flip flopped on stuff. Susan Collins has always stuck to her guns. And even though that Maine is a um, traditionally d democratic state, it, it tends to skew towards the, the Democrats. Um, she has kind of established her brand and I think politics are kind of more local than we uh, realize. So even though like tons of money was poured into South Carolina, into Kentucky, into Maine, it, 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 it didn't really matter. The, the, the people of Kentucky, I mean, generally overall, we saw from the results like Mitch McConnell, the, the people of South Carolina, even though they might not love Lindsey Graham, it's just the dynamics of the state make it this way. And the people of Maine, they trust Susan Collins, even though on the national level people were upset that she voted yes for Kavanaugh. Obviously, it, it, it wasn't a deal breaker in Maine. And so I, I think people respect her for being a moderate. And um, I, honestly, I, not to get po po political, like re Republican or, or Democrat, I, I, I do think it, it, it is nice that um, a state kind of can – reward someone for being a um moderate um she, she voted against amy a amy county barrett which a, a lot of conservatives d dis disagreed with um this maybe could have saved her e election i i really didn't think it would, it would make a difference but obviously i was completely wrong here but the reason why we're, we're not going to know who is in in control of the uh senate is is because of the um races in georgia so david purdue just very narrowly got under the uh, 50 percent mark that is that is necessary to get to pr prevent a runoff. And if we look at the predicted um, right here, we can see that it's honestly like the, the Democrats have a one in four chance to control the uh, Senate on election night. I, I, I thought it was kind of pretty established that that that, that the Republicans were going to keep the Senate. But as we found out that, that that Joe Biden's probably going to win, I would say it's almost certain at this point. So if it's a 50-50 tie, then Kamala Harris is going to break the tie. Um, the Senate races in North Carolina, North Carolina has not been called. I, I feel very confident calling this for Tom Tillis. So that, that, that gets the Republicans to 49. And if we look in Alaska, this race has not been called. I don't think it's going to be called for a while. I have a fair amount of confidence for calling this for Dan Sullivan. However, Al Gross, who is the independent candidate who's running against Dan Sullivan, um, who I think would probably caucus with the Democrats, he said the dynamics of the Alaska race at this hour remain in a state of flux. With approximately 44% of the ballots not yet counted, 
We believe we will win once every vote has been have been counted in the state. So this is a very, very bold claim. And, I mean, I don't really buy this argument. He, he tried to kind of um, back it up with facts. However, if we kind of look at the uh, predicted numbers, people don't really buy this. Um, I, I think people just kind of think he's trying to get uh, attention there and, and realize that, that he's going to lose. So let's assume – that Dan Sullivan's going to win the seat. That, that gets the Republicans to 50 and the Democrats to 48. So in January, there's going to be a runoff between David Perdue and John Ossoff. And, and we can see that David Perdue um, won by around two points, but still it, 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 it wasn't enough. And th- th- this was a concern in the 2018 gubernatorial midterms between Brian Kemp and Stacey Abrams. Brian Kemp barely got a, the, above the 50% threshold to not – to prevent a runoff, um, what I'm I'm predicting in this state, and so we can see that the the runoff isn't here and here. What what I predict right now is that David Perdue will probably eke this out just barely. Um, I, I do think it's it, it's it's going to be a tilt margin. I mean, this is to say that Biden won. Um, it's it shifted leftward a lot on the president twelve. It shifted uh, leftward five points, but I think. And, 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 and we saw this. David Perdue outperformed President Trump. Um, and so I think he's going to eke it out. But we're going to see a ton of money flood in from out of state. I think th- between the, the Georgia special election and the Georgia election, it's going to be over $100 million, maybe even up to $200 million. Because, I mean, whoever controls this, the Senate is just very, very important. And people realize that their return on investment on these two seats are going to be essential. For the Georgia special election, it's going to be between Raphael Warnock and Kelly Wolfwer. Um, we're, we're probably going to see some polls at, at, out of here later um, once it gets to the uh, runoff. Um, but I think it's going to just to be incredibly, incredibly close. Um, I think David Perdue, his, his popularity is higher than Kelly Wolfwer. Kelly Wolfwer has never won an a, a election. She was appointed. Um and so I think it's just going to be very, very interesting um, whether she wins or whether Raphael Warnock wins. Um, we can see on the, on, the, on the predictor right now that uh, Kelly Wolfor is the favorite and so is David Perdue. Um, honestly, I think that the other special election rate might be a pure toss-up. Kelly Wolfer might have a slight edge, but I think people are underestimating Raphael Warnock. I think that Raphael Warnock is a more palatable uh, candidate than uh, John Ossoff. And then also I think Kelly Wolfer is a weaker candidate um, statewide. Um, but those are my uh, uh, opinions right there. So right now, for the sake of this, I'm just going to give it to uh, Raphael Warnock, even though I'm, I'm not sure. And, and that... And in this case, the Republicans would keep it 51 to 49. Um, so it would be enough for GOP control, but it would be very, very close. Um, and honestly, I think people are probably predict these races to go in tandem. Um, I think we're going to see a few Purdue uh, Warnock voters. I, I'm predicting it's going to split right now, but I, I expect myself to change my mind some. Um, because I, I really don't know. I was I was a little bit surprised by Georgia on, on, on the presidential level. Not super surprised, um, but it's it, it's going to be really hard to know, especially with just tons of ad money coming in, um, because the stakes could not be higher. And, and and what this means for 2022, the Republicans are defending a lot more seats than than the Democrats, um, and so the Democrats could presumably gain control in 2022, even if the Republicans. Re- uh, retain it in 2020. So the stakes could could not be higher. This is my prediction. Let me know what y'all think in the uh, comments. And thanks for watching, guys.